series. Are you willing to take the Yone? You know, that becomes the question. Gen G, do you ban out Skarner? Do you ban out Yone? Do you ban out Seraphine or Amumu even? Okay, so it is actually Amumu, so they're banning instead the pocket picks, and they're looking for a trade. And the question is, do you have to take Yone to deny it from Chovy, or is it okay to take Skarner? That is the biggest question right here. Gen G is saying, you can't play Yone. You won't play it, we'll take it. Will FlyQuest, they do. FlyQuest will answer the challenge. They will lock in the Yone. Genji's prepared for this though. They've already banned away the Amumu. They're locking in the Skana and they've paired it up alongside the Smolder as an answer. We saw this in the Swiss stage as a means to deal with the Yone because of the scaling power of the Smolder. But if you can get ahead early, you can quickly shut that Smolder down and its ability to farm up into the late game. Now this is going to be so interesting here. Quad is a player that has made his career playing control mages. That is what he is known for. He has really not played a lot of Yone at all. He has played only three times his entire career. Oh, the fellow stakes! Yes. We used to see this when he played on Rogue back in the day. It was a rare pocket pick available for Inspired, and they needed an AP jungler, so they bring it out here in game five. Kalista from Asu. FlyQuest are throwing everything into game five. You can criticize FlyQuest if you want, but you cannot say they lack confidence. This team knows no fear. And I hope all of you at home can hear the crowd here in Paris roaring with Let's Go FlyQuest, inspired by the underdog story of North America's first seed against the titans of the LCK. The last Fiddlesticks was in 2022 Worlds, and the last three Fiddlesticks played at Worlds were all piloted by this man, Inspired has played it six times in his career. This will be the seventh, sporting a three and three win rate. Okay, so on the other side, the last pick for Gen G before the second half of the bands, they will put Keen back on the rumble. Now the big difference here is because it's right before the second half of bands, they will ban out the Galio that Whippo answered with in the first game. Exactly, and it wasn't even just the Galio, it was also the Seraphine that really allowed them to absorb these equalizers very easily. The big Seraphine shields, the Galio shield on the ulti absorbs so much of that AoE damage here. And now they're not going to have those easy answers. Now, FlyQuest need some form of engage. Things like Renata, Rel, Alistair, all very valuable support picks that Genji aren't going to be able to ban all of them away from. They will remove the Rel, meaning that Leona, Alistair, Renata kind of become your key engaged supports. Because right now, FlyQuest, they have great follow-up, but they need that initial CC to start off the fight. Exactly, and that's why I don't think you can go Renata for FlyQuest, dude. Even though it can be a really powerful 2v2, A, you can get lane swapped on, and B, you need the primary engage so that Yoni and Fiddle can follow up afterwards. I, there's a part of me that's thinking Whippo might go on. Uh, uh. I mean, it's an old school pick for him, but we'll see, we'll see what direction they go, especially in the event of a lane swap. I think there's a world where it can navigate its way through the early game. Oh, six for Pays. Something that domestically few teams will let him have. This is a champion that, remember, was all over the bands earlier on in the tournament. Locked. And now it is locked in for Pays and Gen.G. And it's another champion that has some of that mobility. And you can use the satchel to try to disengage, to try to create that space. But there are these clear targets here for FlyQuest for their engage. Will he go for it? Set against Rumble yeah, I think that's just a cheeky hover, surely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Masu, we I, already I think saw he's gonna the do fiddles, it. I think he's going to lock it. Set! Oh! Locked it! FlyQuest in game five of the quarterfinals against Gen G are playing two picks that have not yet been played in Worlds 24. This is incredible to see, and if FlyQuest can pull it off, not only would the upset be one of the most incredible of all time, if not the most incredible of all time, they would do it in such a unique fashion, in their own style, playing their own game. I, I, I don't, what am I supposed to think about a set? <laughs> You're supposed to think, hell yeah! <laughs> the Maokai gonna be the final lock-in for Lahens. 
going towards the bot side of the map. So much utility on the side of Genji. The Maokai ultimate, the root, the ultimate from Canyon, the wombo combo capabilities of Rumble plus six, the team fight comp, the scaling from Genji is very real. But that doesn't mean that FlyQuest don't have team fight tools of their own. Wow, for so many years, we were even talking about this between the games earlier. There have been so many criticisms and rightful criticisms when we look at teams from North America trying to play whatever they can copy from Korea or from China. And now FlyQuest is saying, you know what? How about not? This is a FlyQuest draft for FlyQuest players in a series where FlyQuest has the potential to do what so many thought was unthinkable. CLG in 2016, C9 in 2018, and Team Liquid in 2019 have made so many upsets come to fruition and reignite the hope and passion for North American fans. Here in 2024, after so many years, FlyQuest are on the precipice using their own style of bringing that faith back once more. The first set top at Worlds since 2021 has not been played in years alongside that Fiddlesticks. This is not something Gen.G will have prepared for. This oh, is not God. something Gen.G will be familiar with. But you look on the other side, Rumble, Skarner, two of the most common champions in the whole tournament. The question is, does that give FlyQuest enough of an edge, knowing the matchups better than your opponents will? It's so fascinating because this is the style of comp that you'd be seeing in them domestically. This is the playoffs type of Genji that we saw from the LCK. Meanwhile, FlyQuest have just said, this is our meta, baby. We're going to do what we think is best. And it makes sense, Genji. You are up against it, going towards comfort here in a game five, where your whole year rides on this. Exhaust for Lehens. That'll be very useful against the Fiddlesticks. Yep. Inspired also with a Summoner's Spellbook, though. That's something we don't see a lot of it these days. We'll have to keep an eye on when he changes those spells and what they become. It isn't something you see a lot of, and something that I have actually seen in the past, watching some Fiddlesticks one tricks, is for key fights, they can go over to cleanse. You can cleanse Exhaust. That's a good idea. So you can actually play you know, in a way that is pretty surprising. But Fiddlesticks, one of the biggest things about this champion is you need to maintain vision control. Yes. You have to be surprising your opponents. You will always be getting reacted to uh, if you are you know, on vision, if you are on wards. So controlling space, controlling fog is massively important. And we'll see if they can do that against Gen.G, who is known as one of, if not the best macro teams in the world, is an expert at stopping that sort of play. Well, here we go. We're getting into it. The laning phase, nice knockback. Exhaust already expended. Yeah, Masu hit with that summoner spell means FlyQuest will just accept that as a win. No lane swap, importantly, in this fifth and final game. All right, Azale, I'm going to rely on your expertise here. Do you know much about the set rumble matchup top lane? I mean, set is just really difficult for a lot of melee matchups because you can walk forward. The E and the passive autos do so much damage. It is very difficult to deal with them, you know, in these early levels. I do think Rumble will struggle if you get in these committed trades. For Rumble, it's going to be about keeping distance, using the Electro Harpoon to slow him down when he pops the Q to walk forward, and just looking to scale, looking to not get caught into a full-on team fight. Well, that wave is a bit of a horrible spot for Quad. Yeah, All it's the rough. minions are just at slightly awkward oh, HP. Which means he's going to lose a lot of farm there. This is kind of the idea behind the Smolder. You can easily stack up against the Yone, and you can just kind of bully him out of the laning phase. At a certain point, it will be possible for Quad to win out on the 1v1 trades. But in this early phase, he's just going to have to accept the futility of the matchup. Exactly. And remember, it's not just the last hits for the stacks. Every time Chovy hits Quad with that snot, it's another one of these stacks. It's more acceleration towards those critical breakpoints for making sure the Smolder can become that insurance policy Gen G needs it to be. And Chovy is just making this a nightmare for Quad. He is playing past the minions as far as he can up. You know, without getting hit by the tower, every single time you're going for a minion, you're getting autoed and then you're getting queued. When you back off and you're limited in where you can go, you're you're going to get hit by the W. It is very difficult for Quad in this position because he needs to get as much farm as he possibly can. He's falling extremely behind, and it is only three and a half minutes in. I mean, this is Chovy at his best, dominating a lane. 
and this is what he needs to do. We've talked so much about how Chovy considered the best player to never win Worlds, considered potentially the best player in the world right now, but always coming up short in these big moments. He's got to step up now when it matters. Look at the potential dive in top lane. That is a mega stacked wave, and Inspired has made his way back towards the bot side of the map. Yeah, Whippo, though, respecting the potential of that, he's not contesting the wave. He knows it's pushing towards him, so you don't need to step up in that spot. You bounce the wave, it'll stack and push to you, so stay under your tower. And Set is notoriously hard to die because of the Haymaker. You absorb all that damage, you put it right back around on them. And so they can't look for it. They only really could have gone for that play if Whippo overextended, and he didn't. All right, Whippo happy to just fall back here as Keen gets the wave shoved in. Whippo is also down in farm about the same amount as Quad. Of course, he will have more to collect up here as the wave crashes into the turret. Canyon showing up down here in bottom lane towards the tri brush, but does not make his presence known as Masu and Busio are at least the lane that is holding on, that is breaking even with their counterparts on Gen.G. But winning both solo lanes is a very good omen early here for the Korean team. Yeah, it absolutely is. And I mean, Whippo not able to land the center of that Haymaker. So, you know, you miss out on that true damage, miss out on that bonus damage, and Keen is really making this difficult here for yeah. Whippo. Set obviously does have a lot of health regen. You know, you can be pretty durable, but when you get put that low, it's time to go back to base. I mean, Keen finding advantages in the 1v1. I imagine the big advantage of Set is when you're looking into a Smolder and a Ziggs, they can be difficult to lock down. But when you've got a Maokai diving into you and a Skana, they're great backline delivery tools. Yeah. So that's why Set thrives. And so if he is the person that Genji becomes scared of, what does that draw your focus away from? Inspired in the jungle, who typically when you're coming into these team fights, so much of the conversation is care for the fiddle, care for the fiddle, get the exhaust ready for the fiddle, get ready to lock him down, CC him, whatever. But if you've got this set just drawing all this attention, it can create a lot more chaos and panic that Genji have to deal with. And I mean, it's going to be, oh, tough here for Whippo. Canyon looking for the enemy top laner. Whippo using the showstopper to get back away. Remember, once he goes into that animation, you're not going to cancel it with CC. So nicely uses Canyon as an escape mechanism. But even with that, you know, he was losing minions during that time. Inspired was moving up towards top, and they will spot Canyon. He's trying to get behind Lehens. Lehens should be able to retreat in time from this one. And I mean, just look at the farm. It continues to be massive for the Gen.G solo laners, as Busio could be in a bit of a rough spot here, but Chovy has no way to lock him down. Gen.G coming to challenge here for the first set of Grubs. Inspired, not level six on this Fiddlesticks. Whippo has already used his ultimate. FlyQuest don't want anything to do with this fight. And a Gen.G team that's already almost 1,000 gold ahead just off of laning secures the first three Grubs. Yeah, I think Inspired was really hoping to just steal one Grub and then get out of there, but he wasn't given the time uh -oh. to do it. And here they come again. Whippo has no ulti this time. He does have Flash, he does have the Haymaker. Boom, there's a big pop. Punch, and Whippo stays fine. And looks like he was able to actually interrupt Canyon's E with his own, you know, snapping him out of that charge there, keeping himself safe. So well played there by Whippo, but it is Gen G with full control here. 800 gold ahead. They scale very, very well. And when FlyQuest commits to a team fight, it's going to be all about having the perfect execution in the first moments of that fight. Yes. Fiddlestick ult, Yone ult, Set ult. All of these have to be picture perfect or Gen G is going to disengage, and then they're going to kite you out, and they're going to burst you down in the long run. All right, here we go again. Lehens and Pays versus Whippo, using the Haymaker early to try to nullify a lot of the upfront damage. Whippo exhausted now, flashing to try to get away. Canyon coming around from the side. Expect the Impale here from the Skarner. Oh! Whippo with beautiful footwork to get away from the 3v1. I genuinely thought Whippo was dead there. He didn't flash until the exhaust came through to create enough space between him and the bot lane of Gen.G. But he's doing a good job of soaking up a lot of this pressure to provide space for FlyQuest on the bot side of the map. Exactly, and look where that gold is going. It's going to Masu here, pushing in that wave, trying to farm these plates. Whippo really stepping up. They have pressured him hard. Gen.G and a lot of their wins have been able to prey on Whippo in the side lanes. They've been able to put him really far down. And clearly, they are seeing that as the recipe to success. But Whippo's not giving it to him this time. I'm actually very surprised to see that he's caught up in farm to Keen. I'm curious as to what Keen was doing in that window because I wasn't keeping track. But the fact that that gap is closed, Whippo was able to get a bunch of waves on top side. And I guess Keen was at risk of getting dived, so he must have been zoned a lot with that high V investment from FlyQuest on the bot side of the map. Because I was getting worried for FlyQuest. The thing about their comp is it's exciting. It's cool to look at. The idea behind it is good, but they're conceding a lot in the early game. They don't have a lot of tools to really contest. 
And that's why Genji is very quick to find these advantages. So finding that punish on the cross map to deny Keen that farm and experience is crucial. It absolutely is. I mean, it's so important to be able to stay relevant, to stay close in gold. And they've done just that. They're only down 300 gold at this point. You can see Inspired has actually spellbooked over to Ignite. So he does Got not it. have Smite right now. So he is trying to look for some sort of a fight. We'll see if he can find it during this window. Canyon up top again, this time finding his way towards Busio and Masu, who have swapped up to this part of the map, but it's not going to work. Busio is level 6 now, Unbreakable Will available on the Alistar. We're talking about wombo combos a lot for FlyQuest in this composition. Part of that includes Fate's Call from Masu, throw Busio in there, the Bowling Ball of Destruction, the original Callista buddy in the Alistar to try to, again, have that massive AoE C but back on Genji's side, they've still got a pretty even state in terms of gold. They're still stacking on this smolder. Quad, again, going to be safe, but under pressure from Canyon. And quietly, we have to note, Inspired is creating a pretty big farm advantage. It's been Canyon nonstop looking for these plays, but not really finding them. And Inspired is just farming away, farming away. Fiddlesticks can be such a threat in these team fights. You find that good ultimate, you can decide the whole game for yourself. All right, the thing I'm still looking at, first three grubs, did go the way of Gen G. That was back when Inspired was still only level five. We'll see if FlyQuest can secure any kind of a neutral objective for themselves now, as the second set of grubs is not yet alive, but the Drake is still around, that first spawned Drake, and that's gonna be Gen G's property. Canyon will take it, no contest. Being able to secure those grubs would be a big deal for FlyQuest. I think that something worth noting is, as Ale has mentioned so many times this series, FlyQuest are willing to show restraint. They, if they feel they're not strong enough to fight, then they will just concede the objective. And to their credit, in the games that they've won, they've been more than happy to do that. They've fallen behind before, and they've leveraged their strong team fighting to claw their way back into games. So the fact that they find themselves at these deficits, sure, is a little bit concerning. It's understandable. But at the end of the day, they're playing for the fights. They're playing for the 5v5. Exactly. I agree completely, Vetti. And I think it's so interesting when you consider that it wasn't that long ago that there was this narrative about North American teams at Worlds that would do nothing and then just lose the game. You'd get outplayed in the one fight where you have a shot and then the game would be over. FlyQuest is changing that narrative. FlyQuest is showing that, no, you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these teams in a 5v5 if you draft correctly, if you play to your win conditions, if you execute on a high enough level, you can take on Gen.G head-to-head -head and beat them. And right now, that head-to-head -head is still very close. A few hundred gold, favoring Gen G overall. Still about a 10 CS lead here for Keen over Whippo. Still about plus 25 for Chobi in the mid lane. 125 CS here on this smolder. Just a little bit over 11 minutes into the game. Stacking up a storm. We'll see hopefully so soon whenever we can get an update on what that checkpoint is. I assume he's got to be getting close to 125 Flowers. now. Here comes the fiddle. Okay. Inspired on the approach, but he is going to walk over a ward. The sapling's going to see him there as well. So stack update, Chovy at 120 already here. Okay. 11 minutes in, that is a ridiculous pace. He's going very fast at this point, and it's just going to speed up and speed up. I mean, hasn't purchased any CDR, so to be at that point is very impressive. FlyQuest, though, over on the grubs here. Genji moving to potentially contest. Inspired, working on all of them. He can use that W to drain them all down. There comes Mom, but FlyQuest look like they're just going to secure all three grubs. No Void Mites for either team in Game 5. FlyQuest is grateful for the leash. Two ultimates invested, and uh, easy secure from FlyQuest. You can see the idea there from Genji, use those ultimates to try and steal, but great patience from FlyQuest to resist the urge to lower the HP enough to allow the steal. Exactly, no panic there. And Quad, yes, he is behind, but the disadvantage has stabilized, and he got a call, and it's about to cash out, and that's going to eliminate, actually, a lot of this gold disparity in the mid lane. So, yep. you know, Quad hanging on, you're laning against Chovy, it's range versus melee. Of course, Chovy is going to be very far ahead. And now, with that call cashing out, he is dead even. He is down less than 20 gold behind Chovy. So the mid lane lead is nothing. Which is crazy, considering he's, what, 30, uh, 25 CS down. Goal's not bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> works out, works out. The gold itself for the entire game is now also back to dead even between the sides. We've talked a little bit about it, but I want to revisit it. Canyon has been all over the map. He's been making trips to mid. He's made a lot of trips up to top, but it hasn't resulted in anything yet for Gen G. We are 13 minutes into the game, gentlemen. 45 seconds left on the clock till plates fall. No kills. And this is the game five we wanted. No early snowball from either side. It's going to come down to the 5v5s that we wanted to see. And we talked about it in draft. 
this old school draft, which is kind of what defined the previous patches meta on the competitive circuit, into FlyQuest's meta, a meta where they have been experimenting, exploring, and deciding for themselves what they think the strongest champions are on the patch. And I truly believe this series, this game, could be something that completely changes how people perceive draft, how people perceive champion strength, and how people perceive the meta going forward in League of Legends. If FlyQuest is able to take down Gen G, utilizing champions that no one else is playing, doesn't that just mean that people are not evaluating champion strength correctly? Oh yeah, I completely agree. But it does come down to winning. It if you does. get close, that doesn't get you semifinals. I people can wipe it away, say it's a fluke, it's a couple games, but you couldn't I mean, steal the deal. The, the, the narrative shifts so dramatically right around the win versus the loss. It does. At the end of the day, people remember the results, yes. and not the nuances behind them. And uh, North America don't want to be in a situation where they were close. They want to be in a situation where they can hold their hands up. I mean, they should be proud of this performance regardless. Mm -hmm. But to get a win would be, I mean, as many have already historic. said, one of the most historic, if not the most historic upsets in world's history. We brought it up in game one, but to remind everybody or to let you know if you weren't there for it, it was all the way back in 2020, the last time that a North American or European, a Western team at all, took a single game off of a Korean team in a best of five. It was all the way back in 2018, Cloud9 versus Afrika Freaks. This was the last time that North America beat a Korean team in a best of five series. That is six long years ago. And now FlyQuest have the chance to get rid of that international ignominy and put themselves in a spot where they can make other teams respect their presence here at this tournament. Exactly. I mean, it's absolutely incredible, you know, for the journey of these players and not just the North American players, the European players and Quad who retired after you know, a disappointing performance in the LCK where he couldn't even come close to touching the likes of Chovy. Now here in North America has been really showing up. Okay, FlyQuest are starting up the Drake, but they're doing it on top of a ward. is gonna clear out the control ward from Gen G in the banana brush on approach, but it looks like Gen G is not interested in contesting this Drake. FlyQuest gonna take that one. Zero stacks on the hard steal so far from Canyon. He is, of course, only recently bought it, but Gen G are conceding these objectives. The gold is swinging into FlyQuest's favor. Blade of the Ruin King, double on the side of Quad and Masu. These are big spikes for both these champions, and now the side lane becomes a lot scarier for Chovy. And it is going to be a Chemtech Soul here on the table. Not one that you know, people are really prioritizing very highly whatsoever. But right. in team fights, it can I, be valuable. I, I think we've seen the difference before, right? I agree. It's. Um, I want to say that it was FlyQuest in their series versus HLE where they had the soul, and then it was thanks to those additional resources that helped keep football alive so many times. Uh, but point is that one to one in Dragons right now. Yeah. No first blood. We have to be approaching. No one's pinged me in my ear yet, but we have to be approaching the longest first blood of world. I think it already is because I, I remember in an earlier game of being about 13 minutes in when we were called for the longest first blood at world. Well, they want quad. It's going to be TPs coming in from both sides. Fate sealed arrives, but he buffers back through the impale with a soul unbound. Mom roars in. Quad is low, but he ain't dead yet. Keen's in trouble, but he turns it back around. First blood over to Jovi and Gen G get their moment. A, an intense play that's not over yet. Rahan's trying to jump in now and get a little bit more Busio. Oh, he's so very close to death. It was nearly a 2 nothing for Gen G. A nice dive initially from Gen G, but the response was a snap TP from Buipo. Quad executed so well, utilizing the E to create space, a really quick ultimate onto Chovy. I thought that he was able to outplay, but Keen's rumble ultimate swung the fight in Gen G's favor. I mean, that was incredible from Quad. I want to see it one more time. I mean, he used the E to immune the Skarner ult. He nails the ulti in onto Chovy, snap back, immune Skarner ult, played it incredibly well. I didn't see quite what happened with Busio when he flashed forward. I'm not sure if it was a failed combo or if he did get disengaged on. I kind of want to see that one more time because there was so much going on in that little moment. Well, I have now just been informed, yes, that was the latest first what blood at this Worlds. Game number five, slow and steady. Both teams all too aware of everything on the line in this one. Chovy continuing to stack up down here in the bottom lane as Inspired will move up and look to secure the Rift Herald for FlyQuest. I think that, uh, oh, Whippo needs to be careful. Doesn't have the ulti available. He does get a nice stun there on the canyon. Haymakers the rest of the wave just to get rid of it and make sure that Genji have to back up. So as this objective is going down, we'll do a very quick stack check. 212 
18 and a half minutes into oh, the game. Oh, back in the mid lane, no! Masu caught out of position, pays, and Lehens getting the kill on the fly quest carry. That was the missing flash. Lehens forced his, uh, excuse me, his cleanse. He forced his cleanse down on that bot side around that skirmish. This time, uses the flash, flashes forward, catches him out with no cleanse. There was no shot for Masu to get out of there. And that's two quick towers secured for Gen G. Bot mid going their way. They forced Quippo back, and Chovy. I mean, I think one more minion. Okay, he's two stacks off the 225 mark. So, I mean, Chenji very quickly finding an advantage here as we enter the mid game. Yeah, but still, the game is very close. It's not even a thousand gold between them, it's just 900 and change there. Chenji do open up the first real lead of the game, but FlyQuest well within distance here to make their mark on this and we're gonna have to find out will it be a fight around this next dragon that's gonna be spawning in 120 the Baron obviously active here in just about 30 seconds and this game is really ramping up in pressure I really want to see FlyQuest get a good setup around this dragon a minute's time they need that setup to find the good fight remember that siege it's really hard to siege against a Smolder and a Ziggs. These champions can stall for days. So finding good fights, securing objectives are going to be crucial to find an advantage in this game. And I feel like this Smolder is just working out so well for Chovy so far. The game being so low octane, just giving him all that room to farm. You're talking about a player who is known so well for farming that if you have Chovy farm, it means you're farming way more than you ever should. He's already at that final stack mark before 20 minutes into the game. He's already on Trinity Force plus Muramana. This guy is set up to be the carry, but inspired with the ult at the end of the wall, immediately into the showstopper coming out from Quipo. Bustio jumps in, and Chovy is down. Quad goes with the paint. See him looking for Canyon now as well, but he's going to have to snap back here in just a moment. Gen G's mid laner finally caught. Farm as much as you like. FlyQuest will take the kill on him anyway. Looking to set up for this tower on bot for the next dragon as well. The rewards do grow, but Chovy's up in 20. We'll see if he wants to do anything on the map with this TP, because for now, it's Gen G heading out towards top lane, looking to take some more gold as the response. The biggest downside is that the kill went on to Busio. 500 gold into the Alistair, not optimal, but you'll still take the kill. Bot lane tower secured. I'm surprised FlyQuest chose not to go for the Drake, but ultimately it just ends up being an exchange of towers and a big kill onto Chovy. Worth pointing out here too, interesting itemization. We'll talk about it after we do the replay. So Inspired, sitting in the brush, managed to make his way in here. Look at how long this little dragon is terrified for. He then gets CC'd by Whippo into the follow-up from Busio, securing a quick pick. Nicely, nicely done there from FlyQuest. The thing I wanted to point out, the 500 gold that you're talking about the Busio got did allow him to complete his first item. He has the Abyssal Mask on the Alistar because you're up against both a Rumble and a Ziggs, and this is going to amplify the damage of the Fiddlesticks in the middle of the fight. Absolutely, and even the Smolder does some magic damage in there, plus there's the Maokai, so I do think it's actually a pretty effective buy. The question is, is it better than something like a oh, Hang on. Guys? We have FlyQuest going for a Baron sneak. Gen.G are none the wiser. Though they have they, to be suspicious, right? Pays. No, but look, they shot off the Scryer's Bloom. Okay, finally, Pays going to throw the, the Mega Inferno gonna Bomb in there. Can they finish? Can they finish? They've got the Baron down to about 5,000. FlyQuest going for an insane Hail Mary right now. King going into the Pandas. Now the Teleport's going to come out from Chovy. Whippo is already dead. Kane's looking to take Inspired out of the picture now, too. But Kane's going to die. Inspired also drops. Two for one. Favor and Gen.G. FlyQuest went for the crazy play. And Gen.G are ready to punish. A double kill for Chovy. Church is in session. Everything falls apart for FlyQuest. The idea is so good. While Genji is setting up for the dragon, they can steal away the Baron. They have the damage, but they get spotted out. Pays reads the play, and the response from Genji was way too fast. I really wonder if the vision plan on top side actually kind of tipped them off. You know, I know that they realize then people are up on the top side. I think the idea from FlyQuest is you hit the vision plant and they say, oh, they must just be clearing out They're the checking wards. It, They're yeah. checking if it's there. But I do feel like immediately once that went off on the minimap, Gen.G started moving up towards the top side. And I think that might be the deciding play here of this fifth game. They get put so low by this Zigzal. They're tanking the Baron. King gets the Equalizer and he just goes straight in on him with the Blast Cone. That control ward as well to allow for the TP. So much damage done by Keen alone. 
He forces the stopwatch out from Inspired, and then he ends up dropping. And then remember the stacks. Oh, the blast cone the blast gets cone. in as well, knocking Masu back in, allowing Chovy to get a double. That blast cone was massive. I don't think they were expecting Masu to flash over the wall and be in that spot. So I think it was Quad that hit it, trying to blast himself into a better spot to make a play. And instead, Masu goes back into the river, and now Gen G with a 4,000 gold lead. It's 23 minutes into the game, and they're bulldozing their way to the Fly Quest Nexus. The bottom lane inhibitor turret falls. Bottom lane inhibitor next on the menu. Whippo trading back a tier two turret up in the top side. Yeah, I mean, the wave clear for Fly Quest is really, really weak here. You've got Kalista, you've got Yone and Set. These champions cannot deal with the Baron Siege, and that's why they made the choice to just try to play through sides, try to get gold back elsewhere. For now, they are down just above 3,000 gold. It is still within striking distance, but the problem becomes Genji have full control of the map. Genji still have the Baron, and one more bad fight could be the end of worlds for FlyQuest. The game was so quiet, so calm for so long, but that's the problem with those Hail Mary plays. If you drop the ball, all of a sudden, you are staring down the barrel of terror. Over the wall, though, go Inspired and Quad. They find the pick on Dakeen with two ultimates. I mean, it's a good pick for FlyQuest. These are the type of plays they need to be finding. They can't afford to give up just yet. They're still too close to that spot in semifinals to rein in the towel. 3K, now the goal difference. Still three minutes away from these objectives. Quad getting that kill is also very valuable as this Yasuo can be a turning point in the game. Yeah, Yone definitely very strong. In yeah, these sorry, Yone, stages. my apologies. <laughs> uh, Chovy, though, Same family, you're good. has the QSS now, gets that much harder. He's approaching uh, that rapid-fire cannon as well, as Canyon will live this, but that is the Sterex being procced, and now FlyQuest getting corralled a little bit here. Yeah, Busio flashing over the wall, trying to make the play on Canyon, but he wasn't fast enough to get the headbutt the other way. Lahan's coming in, trying to help him, but Chovy's ready. Mom's already been summoned. Canyon's low, but he ain't gonna be killed off here just yet. And already Quad bites the dust. FlyQuest again overextending, looking for their way into the back line, but a double kill of it to Chovy. Whippo's gonna die next. Gen G are slaughtering them. A triple for the mid laner. Chovy will not be denied. FlyQuest try to go for another pick. They think that they've caught Canyon out of position, but he uses his ultimate to pull FlyQuest right into the waiting arms of Chovy. The flank from Buipo looked good, but the play just didn't come to fruition, and Genji back in the driver's seat. They just didn't have the damage to make it happen. There's no ult in Inspired, and Masu wasn't even there, so they can't finish off these kills, and now Masu gonna get caught out. He's gonna go down as well. Surely there is no way out here for a Kalista. They'll give the kill over to Keen this time, and Genji, over the course of five minutes, have taken a dead even game and shoved it straight through the heart of FlyQuest. A crushing situation for FlyQuest to find themselves in. Chovy's gonna TP in, Busio. Chovy just not afraid of this Alistar whatsoever. No respect needed, no respect given. Gen G looking to put pressure on the tier three turret in the top side and mid lane at the same time. They did get flash off Chovy though. So he TPs in, he loses his flash. So that could be a small way in for FlyQuest. Let's see if they can find it. FlyQuest are gonna have to find something big because Gen G just keep the pressure on. Mid lane tier three is already out and now the inhibitor could be next. But Gen G respecting what might happen with the fiddlesticks, backing themselves away. They throw the equalizer in a spot where even if they did get jumped on, it would be so hard for FlyQuest to follow up. Super minions continuing to pour in the bottom lane. Exactly, it's just getting harder and harder here for FlyQuest. They lost that bot lane inhibitor. Has been a thorn in their side ever since. You're down more than 6,000 gold here. Chovy did lose his flash, but still has the QSS, has those three items, has an immense amount of stacks now. 315 on the smolder. It's just going to get harder and harder, it feels like, for FlyQuest. And when you lose full control of the map, it's so tough for, for Fiddlesticks to really find any angles, to really find any surprising ways to start a fight. We talked about how that setup for FlyQuest is so important. And you, you mentioned it, Azel, that Baron really was the crux, the turning point. And as much as we'd love to sit here and say that like FlyQuest have potential angles back into the game, the problem is you go to the bottom of your scoreboard and you see Chovy, 300 CS. 
Six one-on-one -on -one score line with three items completed and a QSS to mitigate the fear from Inspire. And when people want to talk about Chovy as one of the best, if not the best players in the world, you have to step up in these big moments. He has been able to do just that for Gen G in this fifth game. Got a big lane advantage, has been pulling that through into the team fights. Busio, though, looking for a potential long flank here. FlyQuest needs to get creative, and they need to be able to find a way in. Gen G, they broke open the game with the Baron, with the punish on FlyQuest's sneak. And now with the Baron alive again, they are in total control. Oh, no. Inspired and Masu in a very compromised position. Busio coming around to try to help them. Inspired has Ghost on his Summoner Spellbook to try to join up. Busio now looking to reinforce the lines as well. But it looks like it's going to be so hard for Gwipo to make his way into the fight as they have to try to save Busio now. Masu barely hanging on. Inspired back over the wall here with a Grow Storm, but it ain't going to be enough just yet. Masu can't even find any damage. Pay stays alive. Redemption for the heel. Chovy's dominating, and Masu burns. Keen gets the kill, and Pwipo will just try to get away from the hens and pays. A double kill for Keen. FlyQuest is aced. All five members of FlyQuest drop, and Gen G will crush the hopes of North America. Gen G was pushed to the limit. They were pushed to the edge, but they were built for these situations. They were built for victory. They were built to win, and they will do just that. Whether it's three games, whether it's five, it does not matter. Gen G has a date with destiny in the semifinals. When Gen G got a lead, they did not let go of it. FlyQuest, they inspired so many. They did what so many did not expect. And as you said, Flowers, they pushed Genji to their very limits. The series was a battleground from start to finish. Analyst Desk, it's all you. When they needed him most, Chovy heard the call. He locked in the smolder. And he went Super Saiyan in this game together with his squad, Gen G, that did not want to make this be a blemish on what they want to achieve at Worlds. They adapted and they overcame, and they're going to the semifinals. And it was a risk. You leave the Yone open, you say, oh. look, I'm going to take this motor and I can answer this. And Gen G, they slowed the game down massively, but. These five men that are about to take it down front of you, they have more than earned the respect of the international stage. Thank you, FlyQuest, for making us believe. I will remember this series forever. Huge respect. They made, they made me proud. I hope they made all the fans at home proud in this series as well. First game win, third game win. Willing to pull out stuff like Fiddlesticks and Set in game five. And we're going to see how Genji does in the rest of this tournament. There's a chance this is the closest Genji gets pushed to elimination. We don't know what's going to happen in semifinals and finals. Genji only lost three series this entire year. And FlyQuest came incredibly close to knocking them off. They did. They absolutely did. We will be talking to Canyon soon. Um, something I want to.